Hey everyone, it's Thad from the History Dweebs podcast, and Thanksgiving is fast approaching, so you know what that means. You got turkey, football, booze, time with your family, possibly more booze, but most importantly, at least to me, is the one dish that comes around really only this time of year, cranberry sauce. So we're going to talk about it. What's its history? Kind of where does it come from? Thanks for tuning in. Now, believe it or not, cranberries are one of the few commercially grown fruits that are native to the United States, and they are a staple of Thanksgiving dinners everywhere. Now, despite what your elementary school teacher may have told you, we can't really be certain what was served at the first Thanksgiving. However, the History Channel notes that Pilgrim Governor William Bradford sent four men on a, quote, fowling mission, which could have been hunting for duck, swan, turkey, or goose. Native Americans were known to eat cranberries and in fact used them as dyes. So we're pretty sure that cranberries made a feature presentation in the first Thanksgiving in 1621. The earliest Native American recipes for cranberry sauce, which were made only with sugar and water, are said to have been recorded in the mid to late 17th century. By the late 18th century, cranberry sauce was well known as a side dish for game meat, like turkey. The first recorded recipe for cranberry sauce appears in Amelia Simmons' 1796 cookbook, American Cookery, where roast turkey is to be served with, quote, boiled onions and cranberry sauce. In the early 20th century, the boom in popularization of cranberries happened because farmers abandoned dry harvesting and moved on to cranberry bogs, which were easier to take care of. As mentioned earlier, cranberries are one of the few fruits that are native to the United States, along with conquered grapes. So, cranberries being at the center of the traditional American meal fits pretty well. Farmers were manually harvesting cranberries from vines by the early 1800s, a laborious and challenging task. Cranberries didn't become more commercially viable until ocean spray changed the cranberry industry in the 1930s with the introduction of the wet harvest, popularized by a picture of a farmer standing up to his waist and a bog covered in cranberries. Part of the popularization of the bog was that it only took a few people to wait for the cranberries to float to the surface and gather the crop, as opposed to a large workforce picking the berries off vines on dry land. Now, because cranberries are finicky and damaged easily, and if they're damaged, they're hard to sell, because of that, the popularization of canned cranberries came into vogue. Ocean Spray again came to the rescue when they decided to make the cranberries into a jelly-like substance and put in a can. Not only was it easier to harvest, but it lasted longer. So be it cranberry relish, cranberry sauce, or cranberry jelly, the cranberry remains a staple of the American Thanksgiving meal. Hey, as always, thanks for listening. We hope you have a safe and happy Thanksgiving and eat till you burst. That's the whole point. Tell someone that you love them and have a great holiday. Take care. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out historydweebs.org for all of our links to our podcast as well as our social media. Thanks a lot.